Hi, it's Live Chemistry. Mrs. KJ is here going over 1.03, Energy Causes Changes. And I do have a slight announcement. Um, if you, this is the fall of 2015, I say that because hopefully I will use these recordings for more than one year, um, your other teacher will actually be Ms. Kisner, um, which you may have had in Earth Science before, or Integrated Science. So in the future, I have no idea who else will be your teacher. So. Um, I may refer to her or Miss R or simply myself. So either way, let's get started. Have your notes ready. Energy is what gets you out of bed in the morning. Yes, but we want to be a little more specific. I am going to warn you, today's lesson is a lot of notes, so hit pause when you need to. Energy, the ability to do work. You should write down everything on this slide. So either hit pause now and do it, or listen to me say it first, and then hit pause and write it down. Exam energy, the ability to do work. Examples, move an object, heat a building, nuclear fission. Types of energy include nuclear, thermal, which is heat, light, sound, electrical, chemical, potential, kinetic. Energy can change from one form into another. Energy does not have mass or volume, so it's not matter. Hey, we pretty much said, well, pretty much everything around you is matter, not energy. But energy does cause changes. And therefore, energy can cause a change in matter. So one of the words that we're going to use a lot this semester is exothermic. Where have you heard the term exo before, or ex? Exit. And exit means out. What about therm? Well, you've probably heard of a thermometer, and therm means heat. So if I put that together, exo, out, therm, heat, exothermic, means that heat is released or escaping or let out of a reaction. So examples, can you think of a time where heat has come out of something? Well, possibly a campfire. The campfire burning is a great example of heat coming out. Now, make sure you have all this written down. What about phase changes? Which phase changes would we call exothermic? So they have heat going out. So when we think about this, we actually need to think about if you are losing energy. So if you're losing energy, are you moving faster or slower? Well, if you're losing energy, you're going slower. So, okay, let's think about the atoms in a phase change. When are atoms moving slower? When they're liquid or solid? They're moving slower when they're solid. So, to become a solid, okay, I have some matter, I have some water, and I want to make it into a solid. What phase change is that? And, of course, that's freezing. So freezing is an exothermic phase change. So freezing is an exothermic phase change. Which other phase change is exothermic? All right, so think it through. We said that we're having energy, in this case heat, going out. So if I'm losing energy, I'm going slower. So solids are moving the slowest as far as atoms. Which one is the second slowest? Liquids, gas, plasma. Liquids, okay. So that means I'm going to be making liquids from something that was going faster. So gases changing to liquid. All right, what is it called when a gas changes to liquid? Condensing. Make sure you have this written down. I suggest writing down the tip because people get confused about this because they start to think, well, it feels warm or it feels cold. No, 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 no. You got to think about the speed of the atoms. I also like this chart. We have our temperature and our heat energy. So as it's warming up, my solid molecules, which were in a nice organized pattern, are melting into liquid, spread out, moving a little faster. We warm it up some more and it boils and woo party! Those gas molecules are going all over the place as fast as they possibly can, right? Fast, far apart. 
lots of energy. But when I'm cooling off, when I'm having less energy, I'm slowing down, condensing into liquids, slowing down even farther and freezing into solid. So gas to liquid, liquid to solid. What kind would we call that? What kind of blank thermic? Exothermic, because the heat is going out. All right, we also have endothermic. Again, if I didn't say it before, I would draw this chart. I Students have found that it's helpful, and I've actually used this for a few other things, too, throughout the year, so it's good to have it. Endothermic. So if exo means out, what do you think endo means? In, and therm means heat. So endothermic means heat is absorbed or brought in to a reaction. The best example is really the ice packs. It absorbs heat from their surroundings, and especially the kind, um, maybe if you have a first aid kit in your car, you keep an ice pack, and it's the kind where you got to like snap the inside and shake it so that the chemicals react, and they basically just, I mean, just draw the heat in so fast, and that's what makes it feel cold. So ice packs is a good example of endothermic. All right, what about phase changes and why? All right, endothermic, energy in. If you have more energy, are you going to go faster or slower? The more energy you absorb, okay, think about if you decided to chug like four of those, besides it would be poisonous and these are totally bad for you. Anyways, if you absorb energy, you move faster. So what state causes atoms to move the fastest? Your states are what? Gases, liquids, solids, and plasma. But we're going to ignore plasma for now. And so of solids, liquids, and gas, which one's the fastest? The gas. So forming water vapor from liquid water is called what? Boiling or vaporizing or evaporating. The other endothermic phase change is what? Think it through. So I'm going to put this slide back up so you can think it through. What's the other one? Hit pause if you need to. Make sure you have this all written down. So, all right, endo, heat in. I want to move faster, so i got to start with the slowest. Solids are the slowest. And liquids are faster, so solid to liquid is, of course, melting. And, okay, I totally Google search for images all the time. But this is my favorite melting picture. It was so pretty. So I thought that was cooler than showing you ice cubes melting again. All right. So that's what you need for this lesson. Make sure you do the worksheet. Check your answer. If you have questions, let me know. And or Ms. Kisner, Mrs. Kisner or Ms. R, whoever your chemistry teacher might be for the year. And yeah, take the quiz when you're ready.